It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day. Hey yo, what up, what up? This is your boy JD Jones. I'm one of your hosts you here at Talk. Talk. And I'm your other co-host, Mocha on the Block. Yo, what's the deal, Mocha on the Block? How you feeling tonight? Man, I'm feeling real good. How you doing? I'm good. I appreciate you asking. It's a lit one tonight. It's a lit one. As always, y'all know how we go. We want to welcome all of our listeners and our supporters around the world. Yo, but allow us to introduce ourselves. If y'all, for those who don't know, we go, we go by the newest, litest, and soon to be most wet. Soon to be most influential Web3 platform to ever exist. And if you are new to our space and are eager to learn more about our NFT gaming project, feel free to click the link in our bio or simply check out the Get to Know Us slide that's been displayed right now um, on our Jumbotron. And also, we are doing the latest in-show giveaways. All you need to do is retweet our Twitter space right now and you can qualify for our in-show giveaway. Um so yeah, back to you, JD. Absolutely, yo, yo. Not only is this our space to display our newest uh, projects, such as Neighborhood Tales, you know, but we show our, we share our space with the dopest guests, and tonight happens to be no exception. We have our guest that's going to be talking about an innovative investment platform that allows our fans allows fans to really just invest and engage with their favorite artists on a different level. Yo, Mocha, let our listeners know who we have the privilege of hosting tonight. Yes, my pleasure. Tonight we do have Exceed. So please let the people know where you're from. Great. Thank you guys so much. This is definitely the most energetic spaces I've ever, I've ever been in. So, you know, that's, uh, that's fun. But um, yeah, so Exceed is a company based out of Israel. And then we also have a U.S. Uh, wing of the company that's based out of New York City. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's where we're from. And as you guys said, what we do is we allow fans to legally and safely and securely invest into talent. We're an SEC regulated and compliant platform, so you can you can uh, invest in your favorite artists and share in their success and earn dividends from their revenue streams. That's what's up, yo. Do you go by Exceed, or you know how should we? How should our listeners, you know, salute you tonight? Yeah, we can, we can go by Exceed. All right, bet, bet, bet it up, oh, man. yo. How did the, you Exceed you know, and Exceed team? How did y'all get into the Web three space? Uh, you know, to jump off with. Yeah, so, you know, we come primarily from uh, the music industry uh, in terms of the U.S. team. Um, the Israeli team is more from the financial sector and the compliance sector. Um, for the U.S. team, the president of Exceed is a gentleman named Anthony Martini. Uh, he was formerly the owner of Commission Records, where he managed and signed artists like Tyga and Little Dicky and helped bring them from, you know, the beginnings of their careers into being international superstars. Um, he went on to sell that company um, and then became the CEO of Royalty Exchange, which is the biggest royalty marketplace in the world. Uh, but with Royalty Exchange, you have to be an accredited investor in order to come in and invest. And it's one-to-one -one investing, meaning there's only one buyer who can buy each investment opportunity. Um, so Anthony, uh, earlier this uh, last year, joined Exceed as the president and kicked off exceeds coming out party to the public. Um, so exceeds been around for about two and a half years, but really building in stealth, um, going through the compliance process with the sec, which is a very long and, you know, expensive road to go down. Um, to date, we've spent, uh, you know, about while we were building, we've, uh, we spent about $5.3 million to help other talent, uh, basically enable their IPOs. Uh, through Regulation A of the SEC code um, to show proof of concept. And we built out our mobile app, which is a fully functional platform that allows us to hold these these reggae mini IPOs for artists. So, you know, we've been we've been building in a lot for a while um, and uh, we've just come out into the public uh, over the last few months, uh, announcing our first that we're going to be providing a professionalized uh, IPO for, which is Little Dirk and his next song called Bedtime. Um, so, you know, that's how, that's what we've been up to. And then in terms of the NFT layer of the company, you know, we see the promise of web three as a 
technology stack and movement that you know allows us to create an internet that's owned and uh, you know that's owned and operated by the users and the builders and governed by tokens and we think that's a really fascinating conceptual framework and that's what we're really trying to enable with our nft related layer of exceed in those products so with the nft side of the product we really use it as a mechanism to deliver um to deliver sort of reward systems to deliver uh immersion into the exceed ecosystem to gain perks and access and uh you know really keeping one foot firmly in the compliance landscape of web 2 and the traditional world in the sec while also keeping another foot in the future of how we can build into a Web3 that really serves and is a safe environment for you know investors and fans to come and participate with artists and create an entertainment industry that's owned and operated by fans and artists, right? So, you know, the first NFT we're launching is around Little Dirk. It's going to be the OTF Exceed Pass. What that pass gives you is priority list access to Little Dirk's IPO, meaning um, everyone who holds a pass will be able to participate in the IPO before the general public and buy shares. Um, you also get a membership in the long term to exceed called the platinum membership. And with that, you will get priority list access to every IPO we do, which means you're basically getting, you know, a window before the general public can participate in these IPOs. Um, you are also getting no platform fees and no transaction fees. Right. Um, so that is what we're using the NFTs for. In addition, Dirk specific, you will be able to get certain rarity levels. We'll get free concert tickets on his next tour, VIP concert tickets. They'll get, uh, they'll get um, online AMAs with Dirk and just access into Dirk's ecosystem and his world in addition to the Exceed ecosystem. So that's kind of the story of, uh, you know, the main players at Exceed, how we've come to be here, you know, coming from music. You're cutting out there. Yo, not, not sure All if right. you lost your seat. Still there? I think we lost him for a second, so let's give a giveaway real quick. I'm being spotted. <laughs> Can we get him back? Let's do a giveaway until we get them back. All right, all right. Who going first? J.D. Amoka. J.D. Amoka. Let's go, Amoka. <laughs> All right. What's up, Cheese? Yeah, give me a number between. Let me get a number between, 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 between. Let me see. One to eight. One to eight. Hey, guys. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Can, can you hear, hear me again? Yeah. We can hear you now. Great. Too. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Sorry about that. But, yeah. All right. We're going to do the quick giveaway. The quick giveaway goes to Penny. Oh, my God. Penny. Penny just can't stop winning. Penny, you win the official Gen Mod Jetpack. Exclusively for Liberty Owl. We will have that to you within the next 48 hours. Make sure you drop your Ethereum wallet address in the Discord ASAP and we're going to get that out to you. Back to JD Amoka. Let's keep it going. Yeah, you know, I'm a little jealous. You literally just made that. Like, <laughs> he literally just made that. Shout out to Penny. That's, Shout that's out to Penny. Shout out to Penny. <laughs> All right. But um, I want to ask you to see. Um, you gave us a lot of information. So how does one even get onto the platform? Is there like a DAO entryway? Is that like um, a subscription service you have to go to on a web on a web application type thing? Like how can someone get started with like, say, initializing uh, the Dirk? Um, I don't even know what to call it. Yeah, All the Dirk fanatics. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an IPO, right? Uh, you're going to be able to buy shares into Dirk's royalty streams. Um, yeah, that's a great question. So the easiest way to, you know, get, a, you know, on board to exceed is to download our mobile app um, in the app store, uh, Mac.com. Maybe you could pin uh, up here a, uh, a link to the, uh, to the app. Um, and then regarding the Dirk sale. So the Dirk sale is going live February 2nd. And it's going to be his NFT, right? And that NFT is going to be a pass that allows you to get this priority access and, and these perks into his career, right? Um, so the NFT sale is happening February 2nd. We're actually running a, a couple exclusive community pre-sales as well. So maybe, uh, you know, we can chat about that as well. Um, and then once the NFT goes live, the IPO will probably follow in about a month or two following the, uh, the sale, which we will announce shortly after 
the uh, the sale of the NFT, we will announce the date of the IPO. So the best way to get you know integrated into Exceed is download the app, join our Discord, which the link is in our uh, our bio on our our Twitter page, and just join the community. And that's where you can find all the alerts and updates of what's going on and what we're doing. Fire, fire, yo, Exceed. Talk to our listeners about the. Uh, you mentioned it already, the, the pre-sales and the early access to, to this uh, IPO. Yeah, so in the lead up, uh, you know, in the week lead up to the uh, Little Dirk NFT drop, which we're calling the OTF Exceed Pass, um, we'll be doing pre-sales, small numbers of pre-sales to, you know, exclusive communities, just giving, uh, you know, early communities access to to buy the NFT before it goes live at a discounted price. Um, so that is occurring over the next week and we'll be, you know, we'll be, uh, collaborating with uh, certain communities, select communities. And then once, once it goes live, um, you know, the certain supply that's left will be open to the public. Uh, we will have a allow list, uh, sale and then it'll go public. And, um, yeah, so that, that's basically how the Dirk NFT is going to work. Um, and you know, like, uh, I think David just posted up here, little Dirk's post about the, uh, the release. So if you just head over to our Discord, really you can get all the information you need there. Love it. And uh, can you also explain what fan shares is and how they work with your platform? Certainly, yeah. So the fan shares are SEC compliant securities, right? And what they represent are shares of the talent's revenue from certain income streams, right? So when a talent signs up with Exceed, they enter into this thing called a TRIA. And a TRIA is a talent-related income agreement. So that means the talent can put any income streams that they want into this agreement, this contract, right? So in the case of Dirk, he's putting 50% of his royalty earnings to his next song, Bedtime, right? So when those revenue streams come in, Exceed brings those 50% of those revenue streams and makes sure it's paid out to the investors who own the shares. Um, so basically, when you own, when you buy these shares, you're actually buying shares in an LLC that owns parts of these revenue streams, right? So basically with Dirk, you are joining an LLC that owns 50% of the rights to bedtime. And every time royalties come in from bedtime, that LLC gets the money and then pays it out as dividends to the shareholders. And we call them fan shares and talent shares. That's what we call them. Man, that's dope, man. What a dope concept, right? Fan shares and how you know, it's going to revolutionize the, the whole Web3 industry for, for artists. Can you talk to us about, you know, the Web3 space and how it will enhance the music industry from your experience, Exceed? Yeah, so again, I think, you know, Web3, the promise of Web3 is, uh, you know, an Internet that's, that's you know, owned by builders and users and governed by tokens. And that's what we're trying to create at Exceed, which is a music industry and entertainment industry that's owned and operated by artists and fans. And it's a layer in the, you know, in the stack, if you will, of artists so they can fund each other. They can self-fund. Um, they don't need to necessarily get involved with middlemen or labels if they don't want to. Right. And it also is an opportunity for artists to say, hey, you know, I'm going to share my career with my fans and we're going to work on this together and be partners. That's an opportunity for fans to actually make their playlist, their portfolio and own a piece of the music they listen to and make money while they listen to music and earn dividends when their favorite artists succeed because they have a vested interest in those artists and they've invested in them. So, you know, that's what we see, you know, as a uh, the kind of the revolutionary aspect of what we're doing and doing it in an SEC compliant and regulated way. So making sure that, you know, this is a, a safe and a regulated environment for people to invest in um, and over time turn that product into more of a Web3 blockchain native product. That's on our roadmap. But to begin, we're starting again firmly in the Web2 world, in the in the, you know, in the compliance and working in aspects of Web3 and NFTs and the Web3 technology layer that makes the product better. And that's always what our North Star is, is how can we make the product better? And then we work back from there. And if you know that includes Web3 technology and blockchain, so be it. If it doesn't, then that's the answer too, right? But we firmly believe that you know Web3 and blockchain technology will lead to a better product, and that's what we're focusing on. Love it. Um... Do you think there are more opportunities for artists in the Web3 space or traditional music market? You know, that's that's a good question. It, it really depends on the artist. Um, you know, in the traditional music 
economy. Uh, not every artist is entrepreneurial or technically savvy or even wants to be. Um, and in the traditional music industry, there are opportunities for them to enter into agreements where they only have to focus on art. Uh, the deal might not be, you know, the fairest, if you will. But at the same time, you know, it's there's there's sort of, you know, subjugating saying, hey, I'm not going to handle all the marketing. I'm not going to think about all this stuff. I'm just going to do my art. And that's fair. And then there's a system for that. For the artists who are more entrepreneurial and can use, you know, can can sort of wrap their heads around this and also, you know, really want to grind and build their brand. Web3 offers you greater sovereignty over your career. You can own more of your stuff. You can you can own, you know, have a deeper connection with your community um, and you can grow, you know, in a you know, you can kind of uh, be your own boss. Right. You can be uh, independent of any any of this, um, you know, of this infrastructure traditionally. And, you know, there's a lot of artists who say they're independent. Right. Uh, but they're not really independent. Right. They have huge booking agents. They have managers. They have all these things. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's, it's binary. I don't think one is wrong and one is better. I think it's just web three offers a new set of tools that can be used by artists and developed by artists. And it's so nascent that artists are like the people that are using this technology are really determining what it becomes. Um, so I wouldn't say it's, it's better or worse or one is better or worse. It's just different. And more than likely the people who are using web three right now that are artists, are you unusually, you know, savvy um, and, you know, sort of independent individuals and and have a mind for this kind of thing. And that's not good or bad. It's just different. But, um, you know, your average kind of artist or person may be intrigued by it, but they're not going and, you know, minting NFTs. It's a bit of a, you know, technical hurdle. You kind of have to be, you know, onboarded into, uh, you know, community or have friends who understand it or, you know, be real, be a really big self starter. And some artists just want to focus on their art. And that's totally fine. And that's where, you know, companies like exceed step in, right? So absolutely, you know, oh, we, we've talked about it on our platform here in neighborhood talk about how artists need, you know, a platform to be able to, you know, step into web three and exceed sounds like a great route for a lot of artists but would you say this your platform is more geared towards independent artists or signed artists uh what's your what's your take on that yeah so in the early going i mean we're curating everything that comes onto our platform eventually we will make it more of an open platform but that being said um you know from an artist's perspective it is an opportunity to hold an ipo for yourself um, which means you have to be fairly confident in yourself and you also, you know, have to show that you've, uh, you know, had some traction or success that's worthy of evaluation, right? Because the investors and the fans at the end of the day have to feel like, hey, I want to invest in this because you can do a reggae IPO and we can enable it for you. But if you don't have people who are actually interested in investing in you, then, you know, or you, you don't have a track record or you don't have an upside to your career or you don't have people don't see potential in it. They're not going to invest. But that being said, if you're a talented artist, people see potential, they could want to invest. So our goal from a, you know, for the fans and investors and the community of investors is to give them as wide of an index of musicians and opportunities as possible. Right. So, you know, we want we will provide for, you know, the investors that exceed and the fans, everyone from little Dirk sized artists and legacy catalogs, you know, from classic rock and, and older music all the way to artists who are literally just getting started, who we really believe in and we think have a good shot. And so we're offering their valuations, right? And everything in between. So it's really for any artist of any size, but you know, there's a certain seriousness that an artist who's conducting an IPO has to have in their career. Cause it's not just a, you know, an NFT pump and dump. Like there is SEC compliance. There is, you know, we will be reporting to the SEC on a regular basis regarding the performance and everything of these securities. And uh, if it fails because, you know, the artist just, it doesn't pan out, that's fine. But, you know, this isn't an environment for artists who want to fly by night and just make a quick buck. This is for artists who are very serious about what they're doing and, you know, feel that they want to take that bet on themselves. And they also believe in themselves enough to bring on investors into their career. That's good stuff. Um, I would like to ask, how was the process of getting Lil Dirk on a platform? Like, how did that come about? 
Yeah. So, you know, within the company, um, there's quite a few people, Anthony, myself, who have, you know, deep and long, you know, uh, relationships within the music industry so the relationship with Dirk just came from relationships that had been a uh, you know long-time relationships and uh just coming to artists and managers and and you know just different groups that we know and saying hey this is what we're doing and uh you know the ones who are the most forward thinking you know jump on it so you know Dirk is a you know a forward thinking individual he's a businessman he's a CEO and he sees the value in what this can be so he he wanted to uh, jump on the train pretty you know didn't take too much convincing <laughs> that's so dope man you know uh switching gears just a little bit man talking about you know sec uh you talked about how your platform is sec compliant we all know in, in web3 it's better to be on their side versus not on the sec side uh with everything going on but uh, what was the process like dealing with the SEC and becoming compliant uh, from their regulatory standpoints? Yeah, you know, it, it is a long process. It's, there's the SEC. There's also a a bunch of, you know, government, you know, uh, accredited and approved organizations that work within this environment, like f- being FINRA registered and licensed. And, you know, there's a very long process of approvals, uh, forms, a lot of paperwork, a lot of... Uh, expenses both legal and in processing that paperwork so it takes it takes a you know it takes about a year and a year and a half and costs uh, and not you know it's it's not an insignificant amount of money that goes into it so that's you know why we've been building silently for a while we came out fully fledged and ready to launch um and uh, you know rather than try and figure it out on the fly we we put together all of the infrastructure so we can do things safely in, in a regulated and, and legal environment. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a long process, a lot of paperwork, a lot of, you know, technical jargon, things like 1A forms and, you know, all of these types of things. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, the regulation is there to protect people uh, for the most part, but at the same time, it's fairly prohibitive. Not, it costs, again, a lot of money and time to file one a form to do just even a reggae IPO and, and get a, approved for it. Um, and that's what exceed is here to do to say, Hey, we took care of all of that. We take care of the reporting, the compliance, you know, there's, you know, there's close to a dozen vendors that are involved in a single offering, right. That you have to coordinate with. So we handle all of that and all the reporting and we make it so an artist rather than filing a 1A form, spending seven figures and then waiting a year to get approved, we can approve their IPOs in two weeks and launch them. So, you know, that's what we put in the time to do. But, you know, it's time consuming and it's definitely a barrier to entry for your average person, an artist. And that's what Exceed, you know, is here to bridge and make sure that any artist, if they uh, again, if they're serious about what they're doing, um, they can conduct a legal public offering of their revenue to the fans and have the fans, you know, share in that journey and, and own a piece of their success alongside them. I don't know if this is confidential. See, I got to follow a question to that one real quick. Like is, so you're doing all the legwork. You mentioned there's 12 different vendors that you, 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 you take on the responsibility of as opposed to an artist doing so. You know, what is a, a XC looking for in exchange, if, if, that's, if you can elaborate on that? Yeah, so every relationship is slightly different, but we take a small percentage of the uh, sale. Um, and that's honestly all we, that, that is our revenue model. We, the I can say though with, you know, full uh, transparency, you know, the artists make the vast majority of the revenue from the drops. So we underwrite and make sure that, you know, everything is paid for to go through the process. Um, again, because we've set everything up, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, we can do things at a higher volume and a lower cost point because we have, you know, set up the infrastructure and become approved. But, uh, you know, the artists take the, the, the major bulk of the revenue. Think of it like any, you know, platform, whether it's Super Rare or OpenSea, same kind of uh, situation, only we're dealing with a much more complex beast in the fact that we are, you know, a broker dealer approved by the SEC and doing reporting and actually legally filing these offerings. Yeah. Moki, you were talking about how, you know, a lopsided it can be in, tra- in the traditional market. Right. But this sounds like a much more uh, enticing deal um, for those looking for those artists looking to get into the Web3 space. So thank you for explaining that part, man. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it seems as though, like, you're setting up everything, so the only thing the artist would have to do is just be, want to be serious about it and come on board, and we'll handle the rest. A little hand-holding if need be, but it seems like your platform would be, I would say, I wouldn't say better than, like you were saying earlier, than, like, the traditional music market, but it'll be better for those who would like to still keep their masters and things like that and control a lot more because in the traditional music market you can't really control much they have your masters they tell you what you can and can't do and they they hold the money pot so exactly it's to see that you do something different exactly yeah and you know to to provide clarity there as well like if you're in a in a con- traditional record contract or publishing deal you could still do an ipo and exceed with the percentage that you own of your royalties and the reason an artist might want to do that is maybe they want you know three four years of income on a valuation in a month rather than waiting four years right and the exchange for that is the fans now own a piece of it and now when those that money comes in the fans are getting those dividends so you can still do it if you're in a traditional deal but yeah it's exactly what you're saying it's like you know, it, there's there's not right or wrong. It's it's just kind of, you know, different opportunities. And we like to see ourselves as like, you know, another tool or, you know, uh, you know, option in the stack of possibilities that an artist can can, you know, uh, use. So that that's how we would look at what we're doing. It's it's, uh, you know, it's another route that you could go. And we'd like to create an eventual, you know, future where fans and, and you know, listeners are like, oh, you don't like own shares in the music you listen to like you don't receive dividends you know from uh when you stream music like oh that's weird right that's the kind of future we want to create where the fans you know really are again a music industry and entertainment industry that's owned by fans and artists and also the unique thing about it too is it doesn't just have to be music royalties it can be any revenue stream so it could be merch it could be touring it could be twitch streaming and it, it's also exceed i think it's good to note here it's not limited to music artists like it's it's a marketplace for talent so it could be comedians it could be content creators it could be athletes and their endorsement deals it could be a celebrity chef like it could be it could be literally any type of talent that is our you know our platform and our vertical from a wide sense it's just all talent so you know someone could be in a record deal that's for their records and say hey i'm gonna actually when i go on tour I'm going to put 25% of my touring revenue in an IPO and sell it, right? And now when you go see your favorite artist on tour, you know, you know that you're also going to get, you know, revenue from those ticket sales in the form of dividends, you know, on a quarterly basis or whatever the, uh, you know, the, the uh, disbursement period is. So, um, it, you know, it's not better or worse. It's just a different way. And we hope to create a culture and an industry where people actually own a piece of the culture that they're, they're participating in and they're listening to and they're, you know, actively being a part of creating every day. Like when you listen to music, when you engage in art, when you engage in, in all of this stuff, you're an active participant in culture. So, you know, there's a, you know, a certain financialization of that, not to you, that's kind of like a dirty word, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, you should, you know, why not own a piece of what you love? Why not own a piece of the culture you participate in? And also, you know, reap those benefits for being a, you know, just like a cultural, culturally involved human being meaning you're listening to music you're you're absorbing art you're participating in art you know the artists are getting paid the record labels are getting paid why not you get in on the action too right yeah and uh what i was gonna say i was gonna say be careful with say artists because you know um only fans probably hit you up to to do <laughs> some <laughs> to do some and then you know it's just cheeks all over the place well who's so, to say they're not artists right you know i mean yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely being modest too, because this is definitely a better way than the traditional way. He's being extremely modest about it, but this is the better route to take. Yeah, I love it. Um, also, I know you did speak on it, but do you see Exceed being a platform that is a threat to to major labels to where, like, oh shoot, we need to get on our toes, or we need to try to see if we can get ahead of this, or if we can get into it. What are your thoughts on it? That's interesting. I think labels provide a lot of things that Exceed doesn't provide, <laughs> right? So labels provide marketing support. They help artists get on playlists. They help artists do PR. They help artists collaborate. They do A&R. They help develop the artists in, in multiple ways. 
XC doesn't do that. We help artists to fund their careers and, and, and for fans to invest and be part of that creative journey and earn dividends and for the artists to make, you know, get, you know, more money up front and then also have a different partner. The, instead of the record label being the partner, the fan is the partner. But the artist can still be in a record label deal and have the fans do an IPO and it can all work together. So we ostensibly, you know, uh, are are not a f- – we – we potentially are either a replacement or an alternative to one piece of the major label equation, which is how they fund artists. But, you know, if an artist wants to, I mean, if an artist wants to go big still, um, you're going to need major support on a marketing side, on a PR side, and on just on, on a look side. You're not, not meaning your physical look, but like, where you're getting looks like playlisting and things like that right even someone like chance the rapper you know five years ago or whatever when he was you know mr independent like he still had one of the biggest booking agents in the game right i mean he was still working in with an infrastructure of a a list artist who was winning grammys you know even though he didn't have a record label he had all the pieces just distributed around him right it wasn't one label it was like i have my pr i have my marketing i have my booking agents right so you still need that. Now, he, he was like incredibly savvy and entrepreneurial. So, you know, he was able to put that together. Most artists just go one stop like, hey, I'm talented. Labels want me. I'm, I've got a little bit of, you know, momentum behind my career. I'm just going to sign with a label because it's like a one stop shop. Right. Um, but, you know, it's just another stack in, again, the the financing of artist career and how they can go about financing themselves. And if they want to keep sovereignty and autonomy over their careers, this is a great way to do it. If they want to do it so they can, you know, raise more money, have the fans be closer to them, build that community of those like, you know, fervent fans, but then also go the label route. They can do that, too. So, you know, there's just lots of possibilities. Um, But Exceed is a tool for the artist. And what we hope to do is just revolutionize the fan experience. And that's probably the. The biggest revolution is in a world, again, where the fans can own a piece of what they love and the culture and artists that they listen to and love and, and, and earn dividends when those artists succeed. Yeah, man. What a, what a dope concept. You, you you touched on my next question, the final question of this segment here for you, Exceed. It's about the, the dividends. What currency do investors get paid in? Is, do they get to choose? Is, is it their option? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. So as of now, the payments are paid out in USD as I mean, in terms of in through wire transfers. Now you would go to the exceed platform, you would attach your bank account. And then, you know, every disbursement period, you would the money would go in your account and you can uh, you can just, you know, wire it directly to your bank account from there. transfer. Very simple. We do we are setting up crypto payments as well. So if you want to be paid out in cryptocurrency or if uh you know the revenue stream is a cryptocurrency related revenue stream we can pay you out in cryptocurrency that is on the roadmap that'll be coming out later this year um but yeah for now it's usd and for instance you know something interesting like say you're an nft project right you're gonna launch an nft whatever it is you could technically not technically you can do an ipo reggae mini ipo with exceed and you can say, hey, I'm going to put 25% of my primary sale NFT revenue into the talent related income agreement, which is where the talent shares, you know, come from, where those revenue streams are. You're like, yeah, I'm going to put 25% of my primary sale, just making up random numbers, put 20% of my secondary royalties, I'm going to put 50% of my merge into this thing. So now when the NFT sells, before the NFT sells or after, the project could conduct an IPO and say, hey, you're going to buy the NFT, you're going to buy that intellectual property, that collectible, that avatar identity, or whatever it is, this past, whatever the NFT is, you're going to buy that, and you're going to own that NFT for what it's worth. But then you're also going to, we're going to IPO. So you can now own a piece of the company or the underlying project, right, and get dividends. So now there's two layers of participation. There's the NFT participation and the market that's around that, you know, the trading and arbitrage market, as well as the, you know, the intellectual property side of owning those you know unique assets and saying hey you know i got in on azuki really early it's like you know owning rare jordans or pokemon cards great all that stuff is awesome you're doing that but then you also own shares so when the secondary royalties are cranking up if the project's doing well the community is actually getting dividend payments in a legal and sec compliant way right so in those occasions they're those people are getting paid in crypto um 
you know, it can either come into the, the LLC that is set up for the mini IPO and we can, you know, in this case, in the, in the first few quarters of exceed, we'll be converting that to USD and then paying out through the accounts, but eventually we will have crypto payments. So if someone is doing, you know, has a crypto native uh, revenue stream, then the crypto can just be paid out directly to a a user or they can choose to convert it uh, when they want their money, if they want it in cash. Love that, man. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for talking about the currency and the dividends and how that can be paid out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, So, we will transition to our second part of our neighborhood talk, which is called Capper Fact. It's basically where I'll ask you a series of questions and you'll say Capper Fact and you'll give you a reasoning as to why. Let's um, do it. So yeah. the first one is blockchain will change the music industry for the better. Huh. I want to say fact, but uh, we are so early right now. Uh, I want to be optimistic and say yes, but right now, everybody who's participating in this is part of shaping the future. Mm-hmm. And I think people have to build, you know, there's vision, but I think even more than vision, intention matters more. We have people have to build with intention and consideration of the ripple effects of what they build. Like you think about humans throughout history, we usually don't do that, especially with technology. Like we've built Reddit, we've built, you know, like porn right on the internet. Like we have built all these things that have extremely delirious, deleterious effects on humanity and like our culture. And we don't really think about it because we're just kind of building stuff like Facebook, like, Oh yeah. Like well, we're going to rate girls and guys and whatever. And yeah, cool. And then it starts growing like wildfire. And then, you know, the impact on our culture, there's some positives. There's also some big negatives or like building an atom bomb. It's like, you know, these scientists aren't thinking when they're splitting an atom that they're actually building something that is, you know, they realize it's dangerous and it can be used as a weapon of war, but they're not thinking about the impact this has on humanity. So I think people have to build with intention. So if we do build with intention and forethought, then I think it will be positive. If we don't, then I think, you know, it'll it'll just be another mechanism for people to, uh, you know, kind of control and 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 take advantage of one another. So it's really up to everybody in the space how they want to build. There's a lot of fear right now. It's been a bear market, obviously. There was a big euphoric pump. So, yeah. you know, it's really kind of in a make or break uh, situation right now. But I want to be positive and say that it will. It will be for the better. We'll say it. Yeah, we'll say it. We'll go with it. <laughs> Rock with it. You know, on the, on, the, on the thought of, you know, the Web3 space being a greater opportunity, Capra Fat, do you think Web3 would generate artists more revenue streams in the future, Capra Fat? I think definitely fact. I mean, I think that's inevitable. Yeah. Now, who controls those revenue streams and those avenues, we'll see. But I think there there will be more revenue streams. And it's just about, again, it's all about product. Like, how good is the product, right? You don't sell an NFT for selling for an NFT sake. How can this technology make a better product? And I think, you know, there's a, there's, you know, endless ways to be creative about that. And uh, yeah, so I, I think it will definitely create more revenue streams for artists. Love it. Um, so <laughs> I would like to thank you for coming out and letting us know more about Exceed and what you have planned for the future. Do you have any final words for our listeners? And like, how can we reach you? Yeah, guys. <laughs> Yeah, we just we really appreciate the support and the interest. Um, head on over to our Twitter, follow us on Twitter, head into the Discord. Again, everything that you could possibly want to know about Exceed is there. You know, join the community, stay up to date on alerts. And, uh, you know, again, if you're in the Discord, you'll be up to speed on everything that's going on. Join in on our pre-sale. We're going to start the pre-sale this week. So that's going to be, again, at a lower price point. We're going to be giving away about 500 of those opportunities to our community members. So, you know, I would say the simplest thing is just join the Discord, and that's the easiest way to stay up to date and join the Exceed journey. Love it. Love that. Love that. Yo, you know, we like to be interactive with our uh, audience. Uh, we got a few speakers up here. We got Shamgar, uh, who was literally, you know, breaking waves in the Web3 space and how the, the, the Web3 gaming will change the future. Uh, if you got anything to say, man, let it be heard. Now, meet, we got Meech as a speaker. Uh, feel free to uh, share your voice, man. Talk about anything you want to talk about, Web3 related. 
Uh, now is your time. Man, I hear Neighbor of Tales is coming out soon. We might actually get the beta tested. <laughs> Definitely. It's on the flow, man. You better uh, talk about it. Facts. We're talking about it right now, man. Web3 beta testing for Neighborhood Tales is officially upon us. So look out for more information. You already know how we get down as far as our Discord. Uh, as far as we get, you know, you know how we keep it moving at Neighborhood Tales and Neighborhood Talk. Uh, we're right back at it. This coming Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We got our dog Fussy Fox coming through, dropping through in our space, talking everything about the Web3 space. And and uh, we're excited to have Fussy Fox on our platform. What an opportunity it was to have Exceed on our platform tonight. I know everybody enjoyed that. Show them love, y'all. Throw, throw some hundreds up, y'all, if y'all really enjoyed Exceed. Exceed came through and dropped knowledge about how, you know, the Web3 space will revolutionize the the artists, um, the, the the music industry as a whole. So thank you for stopping by and dropping all of that knowledge on us. Uh, if you are not already a part of our Discord, we're giving away $100,000 in cash prizes. The Neighborhood Tales project is upon us. Beta test is coming. You want to be a part of our Discord to be eligible for all the cash prizes, all of the drops, all of the exclusive updates. Log into, um, I'm sorry, head over to our Neighborhood Tales page at NH Tales. Click the link in our bio. Be a part of our Discord. Be a part of all the drops. It's going down. We are the newest and latest. Mocha, as always, it's a pleasure to share this space with you and host with you. I appreciate you and all you do for the Web3 space as well. Likewise, man. Uh, I just would like to thank all the listeners for coming out and rocking with us for episode, for episode 28. Uh, really appreciate y'all. Um, and again, you can hit us up on NH Tales on Twitter and also Neighborhood Tales on every other platform. You cannot get rid of us, as I like to say. We're on IG, TikTok, Discord, LinkedIn, Facebook, and you can catch all the re- recordings um, on our Neighborhood Talks um, YouTube channel. And you can also find me on Twitter and IG at Mocha on the Block. It's been a pleasure, y'all. And until next time. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Mocha. Oh, I sure it's been a pleasure. Hold up. It's good. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Yo, let's, yo, can we book Mech? Like right now, Mac, what are you doing? Me? Oh shit! I'm I'm just chilling, listening to Exceed. I mean, damn, that, that's some crazy shit that they're doing. I'm trying to figure out how I can up my ad revenue from streaming and get in on some kind of IPO and let all you guys become a partner in my gaming career. Oh man, hey, let's talk. Let's do it, Exceed. What can we do? Put him on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It's hot. We're in the neighborhood. Everything is on the spot, man. <laughs> Everything on the spot. Mech, Mech, we definitely need you up here. Uh, We need you up here as soon as possible to talk about what you got going on. So I just want to throw that out there in front of everybody. And we got somebody with their hand raised, so let's take them, and then uh, we, can, we can move on. I appreciate you guys. And talk about on the spot. I was wondering if it's okay if I ask Exceed a question. All righty, I'll take that as a yes. Just a little quick question about the OTF, you know, NFTs or the how you can become part of it. I see that the diamond, you guys have the gold, platinum, and diamond um, rarity breakdown. And on the diamond, there's platinum OTF conductor Web3 stem player, which has like a bedtime song and two other unreleased OTF songs. Also a virtual meet and greet with Lil Durk and VIP tickets to Lil Durk's tours. Does every artist choose the perks that comes with their shares, or do you guys have like a basis of perks? Yeah, the artist chooses. So you know, we suggest things. Uh, in Dirk Chase, we suggested and he chose. But um, yeah, it's it's up to the artist. Funny you brought that up. We have not talked about the conductor stem player, but you guys got to go check that out. So if you go to search exceed on OpenSea and you go to our rookie classmate, the conductor is actually an in-app NFT. And it is a STEM player in an NFT. We're right in open, so you can pull it up on your phone or on desktop, and you can make your own mix of the song in real time, listen to the stems, take out the, the synth, or bring up the drums, or just solo the vocal. Um, and you can actually download your own mixes if you want. So that is awesome, and we haven't been talking about that too much, but the conductor is a revolutionary device. It's an app in an NFT. But um, yeah, you know, we, for one thing, we try to just, with every drop, we want to do something extremely creative, 
you know, technologically, that's where kind of like the conductor came in. Right. And then we suggest different things. And sometimes the artist, you know, is like, hey, I really want to do this. I'm like, that's great. Sometimes the artist is like, yeah, I mean, OK, we want to do perks. Like, what do you guys think? And we suggest things. So it's different for every artist. Not every artist will do an NFT with Exceed. Right. I mean, it's really up to them. Um, and then we always just try to provide value. So, you know, you're going to want to hold on to these NFTs. That's all I can say. But we have a lot of things planned on how to accrue, you know, rewards and value to these NFTs in the long term. And the earlier NFTs, the provenance of those early Exceed NFTs are going to uh, definitely, um, you know, be worth holding on to. But yeah, th- those perks are really up to the artist and, uh, and what they want to do. Awesome. And for anybody who wants information on the STEM player, I just pinned it up on the top of this Twitter space. Oh, awesome. Great. And I got one more thing. We got to get Undead Blocks on here. Undead Blocks, I know you just listening right now, but if you can hear me, hit us up. We got to get you on here. We love what you're doing. Jaden and Mocha, it's back to you. All right, yes, y'all. It's been a pleasure once again, and i just like to say um, have a nice night, y'all. I'm about to go eat. Hopefully, y'all do too. I already ate. So, good night. It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day.